The most interesting thing recently that we've been working on is that we've actually been trying to figure out how post-transplantation cyclophosphamide works. So this has been something that's been talked about at meetings and written in papers as if we actually know what we're talking about. Um, but th the explanation that's been put forward has been largely extrapolated from mouse skin allografting models from the 1980s and early 1990s, which really didn't fit with what we've observed clinically in allogeneic hematopoietic cell transplantation in patients. So the idea had been that alloreactive T cells would um, encounter antigen and become activated and begin proliferating the host and would be more susceptible to cyclophosphamide-induced cell death and apoptose, whereas non-alloreactive T cells may be quiescent during that time period and be less affected by cyclophosphamide overall leading to an immune reconstitution devoid of alloreactive cells. However, this has been, there's been a big disconnect between this explanation and uh, what we've observed clinically in that post-transplant cyclophosphamide has its biggest impact on preventing severe forms of acute graft host disease or chronic graft host disease. Whereas uh, grade two acute graft host disease or clinically significant acute graft host disease can happen frequently after the use of post-transplant cyclophosphamide. And so this would suggest that alloreactive T cells were persisting despite cyclophosphamide, um, but subsequently are being controlled such that they do not lead to chronic graft versus host disease. And so uh, when I was formerly at Johns Hopkins, we began studying this further and found that regulatory T cells preferentially survive cyclophosphamide in vitro and reconstitute quickly in patients recovering to normal, normal levels by a month after transplant, which was particularly surprising given these patients have CD4 lymphopenia that lasts for uh, years after transplant in these older uh, post-thymic patients. Um, we also showed that regulatory T cells were necessary for the GVHE preventive effects of cyclophosphamide in, in multiple papers. More recently though, uh, we readdressed this central dogma this idea that alloreactive T cells are being eliminated by cyclophosphamide, and that's the driving mechanism of how post-transplant cyclophosphamide works. And so what we did is we developed a new haploidentical mouse transplant model to study this. And in that model, as well as in uh, four other models, and using five different markers of alloreactive T cells, we showed conclusively that alloreactive T cells are not being eliminated by post-transplant cyclophosphamide. They're actually continuing to persist and in some cases proliferate and expand despite cyclophosphamide, but they don't cause uh, graft-versus-host disease or the graft-versus-host disease is ameliorated. And it appears that uh, they're becoming functionally impaired by cyclophosphamide such that they cause less allo uh, reactivity both in vitro as well as on serial transplants. And, um, just as importantly, it appears that regulatory T cells, as we had shown before, do uh, preferentially recover after cyclophosphamide. And this is both um, bulk regulatory T cells as well as what we can show to be alloantigen specific regulatory T cells. And they play a critical and necessary role in controlling the alloreactive effector T cells that survive cyclophosphamide. And Moving this now to the clinic is right now we've been operating under an incorrect paradigm. And so everything we've been trying to do moving forward is in effect empiric, even if it was intended to be rational, because our, uh, the paradigm we've been operating under appears to be incorrect. And so now that we're putting together a paradigm that's more based on uh, experimental data in hematopoietic cell transplantation and that appears more consistent with what we observe clinically, we can now use this to inform further clinical studies and how we treat patients today.